Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Heart Room. I'm Travis Bruce, and today I have a special guest. Um, today I have with us, he's an author, and he has his debut novel out, and it's called Fear Not the Dead. I have with us Brad Ricks. Brad, welcome to the Heart Room. Hi, Travis. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to have you on, man. Pleasure to have you on. By the way, I love the cover of the book. Um, I, I got a pleasure to see the cover of the book. It's a beautiful cover. Um, tell us a little bit about Fear Not the Dead. So, first of all, I yeah, I agree on the cover. It is a beautiful color uh, cover. Um, couldn't have asked for a better one. Um, uh, Christy Aldridge was the one who did that for me. You know, uh, she does some great work um, for uh, Unveiling Nightmares and uh, you know just other p uh, places around. And um, yeah, it's a beautiful cover. Cover, I love it. Um, so. Ah, the wonderful question. Tell me about it. Um, without giving away the end, you know, without spoiling yes. it, as well as without <laughs> and without going in an hour long uh, synopsis of what the book's about. Um, <laughs> so, um, so for the most part, it is a revenge story that takes place in a haunted house. Um, so to kind of sum it up into those <laughs> quick little elements. Um, so the the main character, her name's Anne. She's uh, suffering from a lot of tragedy, um, and she's kind of have some. She has a lot of re repressed uh, memories from stuff that happened in her childhood. Um, and her therapist said, "Hey, to help, what you need to do is go revisit that location, um, do this immersive therapy to try to, you know, kind of pull back all the, you know, all the all the junk. And um, the place they go to is a it's the it's it's haunted they don't know that of course um but it's haunted anybody who's ever died there's kind of stuck there um and so you have this kind of uh, this little web of deceit that's happening with this little revenge story and like i said it's it's happening in this place where other things are also happening so here the lady already thinks she's crazy and now she's seeing all this stuff as well so you got kind of crazy playing on top of crazy <laughs> so so this is a, a unique idea for a book now, what gave you the idea for the story? Um, so it kind of um, it it kind of grew out of a couple of different things. So um, you know, as any kind of story idea, it doesn't it doesn't necessarily start with like this is the full fledged plot. You know, it kind of starts with a seed and then kind of grows from there. And I I had thought about um, I initially thought about doing something similar to. You know how how Stephen King did it, where like every chapter is a um, some of it you're an adult, and then you go right back into to, to the it's when like you're a kids and back and forth. Yeah. So I I wanted to play with kind of a dual timeline, and so I was like, okay, well, how would I do a dual timeline? And um, and so from that, I was like, um, that was kind of that kind of story. I was like, I got I want to find a good storyline where I can do that. And so I was like, well. What if you don't really remember what happened in the past and you got to kind of dig those all those out and then that kind of helps now you have those flashback uh you know pieces and so that's so that kind of grew from that i was like oh well we need to have something that's repressed well what what happened that caused this and so you know everything is i'm kind of working through the elements of you know i really want to rack this story with two timelines <laughs> everything kind of built one on top of the other to you know end up with the final result that that we have now, is it hard as an author or writer to do that kind of writing where you are kind of telling two stories at one time? Yes, because um, I, I, I feel it is because there is a um, there, there's a little bit of a, um, of a of a risk you're taking in doing that because what you you don't want it to be where as a reader, you're like, oh, it's flashback, I don't care, and just keep skimming through. So you want to trickle information through that is, you know, in in regards to a flashback that's relevant to what you're, what's happening in the present. Um, you know, if it, it needs to be pertinent of what's happening, because um, in and of itself, if we know that Anne is alive in the future because she's there, well, when you have a flashback of her, you know it's not like she's going to die in the past because yeah. she's alive in the future. And so, you know, some of the elements of that that tension, you have to find it in a different spot 
um, than just, you know, okay, well, because in essence, you know, with a thriller, there's always that element of, you know, of, of harm or death or something that's kind of overarching is kind of, you know, the, the, the knife is just always kind of hanging above, just kind of waiting. Um, and, but when you kind of go flashback, well, you know, it's not really there because they're there in the future and in the present, you know? Um, so as long as you're, so that was one thing I wanted to make sure is, as I would kind of plotted it out to make sure that the stuff that I was doing anytime I went back in time or, you know, she's remembering something, um, becomes very relevant to what's happening in the, in the present to help propel the story forward in the present. Because I definitely didn't know what you mean. Like, I've definitely read books where the flashbacks have nothing to do with necessarily... I'm not saying totally, but, but <laughs> it, it has really nothing Character to do development. with development. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then, like... And you do sometimes skip past those. Like, okay, I got it. Let me skip past it if I don't need to read this. And yeah. So, it, it's but it's great when you read a book like it where the flashbacks... And it seems like you were yours, where the flashbacks actually built to the story right yeah it's because it, there's not to try to give too much away like there's a scene where um she has a flashback of as a kid she remembers going into the there's a basement to this to this uh this bed and breakfast that they're at um this this estate um she remembers as a kid that she was down there and she saw some stuff and so now as an adult once that memory kind of gets pulled back out as an adult she's like I need to go down there and figure out what's it, you know, to, to search for what it is she's looking for. So, you know, it's, you, it's, like I said, I tried to use those previous memories to help, you know, to help fill in information that becomes relevant in the, you know, for the, for the present tense. Now, Brad, the as, present action, I should say, it's not written in present tense. <laughs> now, Brad, as you're writing your debut, a book and you put your deeper novel out what made you be like you know what fuck it i want to write a horror book <laughs> so um so i oh, i've always been a fan of horror um i used to, i mean i when i was in i remember being in junior high and i loved edgar Allan poe when i was reading a bunch of stuff by, by poe i think i was in eighth grade when I had a teacher go, well, if you like Edgar Allan Poe, you should read this. And she handed me The Dark Tower, um, or uh, The Gunslinger. Um, and so and that was my first introduction to Stephen King. And then, of course, from that point, I was you know, hooked on Stephen King, and I read everything he, you know, he wrote. Um, I also loved, you know, loved the, the classics, the you know, going back to Dracula and Frankenstein and, and Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and all that kind of stuff. And so... Um, you know, I always kind of love the horror element, um, and and that, and so as I my I, I used to write short stories when I was a kid, and they were always they were kind of scary, but I was a kid, I didn't know how to write short stories. Um, <laughs> yeah, I didn't I didn't really know how to write scary stuff. Um, whenever I started, um, and was like, you know, I think I want to sit down and write a book again. The first book I actually wrote, which is sitting in a drawer and will never ever see the light of day, you know, it's it's the learner book. <laughs> um, uh, it's actually not a horror story; it's an adventure book, more you know, closer to like an Indiana Jones kind of thing. And um, it's fun, but it's it's fun, but it's not good. Um, my wife and I had just got back from our honeymoon, which we took in Italy, and as uh, as we were going around in Italy, I. You know, we look at these beautiful murals and stuff uh, in the cathedrals, and I was like, "Ooh, what if there's a hidden message in here and we don't know it?" And that kind of then kind of started the um, the, the the wheels of turning for you know writing a, a book like that. And it really more so was an homage to our honeymoon. It was actually a real adventure book, um, and uh, so it was nice and it helped to kind of learn how to write a book. Um, mm -hmm. Because it's, you know, a, a lot of people are like, oh, I just couldn't sit down and write a book. There's a lot to it besides just kind of sitting down and writing, <laughs> Here's a, um, which I learned as I was trying to sit down and write. Um, but I, when I got done with that, I was like, you know, it's fun. But I think I'm going to, I was like, I want to, I want to write something that's a little scary. So actually the next thing I wrote, I wrote a, um, I wrote a vampire story. Um, and actually at the end of, so at the, at the end of Fear Not the Dead, you'll have, there's an excerpt from my next release, 
which is called The Night Crew. And that um, that's the vampire novel that I actually wrote, which um, I actually wrote it kind of as my really my first book. Um, and it originally got picked up by Wicked House Publishing. Um, and then um, Wicked House decided, uh, so Crystal Lake uh, ended up buying it from them. And um, so it got pushed to, instead of coming out this year, it's, it got pushed to coming out in February. But, um, but that's going to be coming out through Crystal Lake. In the interim of that is when I wrote Fear Not the Dead, and, um, and then it got picked up by Anna Valley Nightmares. And so although it was like, it, this is actually the second book that, I'm gonna, that was picked up to be published. It's the first one that's being published. So nice. um, the, the, little vamp, the vampire one was my first one. So um, that one's also a pretty fun one. But that, ended, that started with just, you know, it's a horror story. I was like, I was like I'm just going to write a little vampire story. Um, and then halfway through it, I was like, there could be a world here in this little vampire story that I'm writing. Um, and so it kind of, it, it kind of grew in scope to where hopefully kind of knock on some wood. Um, I write some more of those and it gets, it becomes a series. That'd be awesome. Now, now Brad, how is amazing is it to, you know, become a writer and get that first, you know, publisher that's like, yes, I want your work. Uh, so it is awesome, especially for, um, you know, I'm, I'm in my forties, you know, for this being my first, you know, Hey, you now have a book published. I mean, it's been something since I was, you know, in high school, I used to write short stories and, um, you know, I it, now having, um, you know, an actual book that, I mean, I, I actually got the first author copy in the other day. I wish I had it sitting next to me, but I don't. Um, but yeah, when it came in and I was like, Oh my God, it's a book that has my name on the cover of it. Um, <laughs> I was like showing everybody at the house. I was like, look, um, I mean, it was awesome when I, when I got the, when I got the first book. So when the night crew, which I know we're not talking about night crew, but when I got it, uh, cause it was the first one that got picked up by a publisher. I actually got that acceptance letter. Um, father's day last year is when oh. like I got the email on father's day and I was like, I was like, Oh, this is, I was like, I, I was like, this is an awesome Father's Day kid, present. I was like, come on, kids, beat this. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it's a it it's such an awesome feeling. And then as as arc readers have been reading for Not the Dead and have been um, reviewing it like on Goodreads. Um, so far, I got I have six reviews, and um, all of them are five stars. And so um, so I have six five star reviews right now. And the things that there's people are saying about it. Um, I mean, it's, it's awesome. And, um, of all the reviewers, only like one is somebody who I actually know others are just ones I sent out or were part of the unveiling nightmares art team. Um, and you know, so people, I, I don't know. It's not like it's my wife going, Oh yeah, he's so great. Um, you know, <laughs> it's, um, it, you know, it's, uh, you know, it, having other people read it and go, you know, wow, this is awesome. This is great. I'm so, um, one uh, a fellow author. Uh, his name's uh, Jeremy. He uh, he wrote the reptile and he wrote um, the lodge. Um, he he read it. And was like, oh, I'm so glad to have been an arc reader for this. It was you know, it was a great read, and um, and so it's you know it, it's it's definitely a very awesome feeling and um, very encouraging to want to want me to keep writing and keep doing other stuff because writing of itself is a it's kind of a very lonely thing you're just sitting in a room usually all by yourself just kind of writing and you know seeing seeing what other people are saying about the stuff that you're doing it's it is very uplifting and it's very energizing and um you know it it, it keeps you wanting to go um you know definitely with any any um book that you read you know i always it highly recommend going out once you finish it, give them a review, give, you know, rate it, you know, let the author know that, you know, Hey, I agree. I really appreciate this. And it was, it was good. It was good to do. I 100% agree. I mean, that's any, any creator. Yes. Give them reviews, let them know because it keeps them motivated, keeps them going. And, and that's something you have to do. Correct. Plus it allows other people to see the reviews and be like, 
hey, let me check out his work or her work. And that's something you right. definitely everybody should do. By the way, shout out to Unbelly Nightmares and Crystal. I love you over there. I love the guys. Everybody's great over there. So shout out Crystal to Crystal is Nightmares. awesome. Yes. Crystal's awesome. As a um, you know, as a first time author, you know, I I barely know what I'm doing when I'm sitting in front of a word processor and I'm, I'm writing this stuff to then get, you know, you, you kind of get tossed into this publishing world and suddenly things are like, Oh, well, what do you think of this cover or, or these blurbs or this? And you're, I'm going, I, I don't know anything about this stuff. <laughs> um, and Crystal is so awesome in that she's, you know, I, I will ask her, which I'm sure to her is probably like real dumb questions because she's like, how does he not know this stuff? But, um, she's great about, you know, just saying, Hey, you know, whatever it is you want to do. Um, you know, if you want to change the font on the cover, if you're wanting to do this, if you want, you know, whatever, she's open to, you know, to whatever the author's vision is. Um, she tries to make happen as much as she can. And, you know, she's been very responsive in, um, any of the dumb little questions that I have um, and, you know, and all of the, the nagging that I do on, Hey, when, you know, um, do you, do you have the PDF done yet? I really want to say that. Out. Um, <laughs> any of the nagging stuff that I've done to her. Um, love you, Crystal. Um, then she's been, uh, yeah, she's been great. It's cause I mean, I mean, listen, I'm not a writer, but I've, you know, I've interviewed several writers and having a good publisher or a good press behind your back. If you're going that route and you're not going to self-publishing route, it's so key. It's so important. It really is. Right. And and that's so I've I've not had the privilege to like where I've had an agent and a traditional publishing and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. But from what I've heard in regards to, you know, the control you have if you if you're if you do a traditional publishing versus when you go with an, with an independent publisher, like I, you know, on Unveiling Nightmares, I, I almost don't care to kind of query out and try to get an agent and all that kind of stuff because of the, the flexibility that they have. When I, when I first signed with, with Crystal, Fear Not the Dead wasn't supposed to come out until like October. But then after the switch with the night crew and it moved from uh, Wicked House to Crystal Lake, um, July was open and I was like, Hey, is it possible if we move up a little bit? She was like, yeah, no problem. And you know, if I'm with, a, if I'm sitting with a, you know, one of the, with the big three or big five or whatever the number is for the publishing companies, that's, you know, one, that's not something I even remotely have a, a, you know, a say in being able to, to do, yeah. or, you know, there's so much control that you kind of let go of. And yeah, having a, a, a publisher that is, very responsive and um you know doesn't mind kind of take you under their wing and and you know help you learn that side of the world just as much as um you know the side where you're just kind of sitting at the computer and typing um you know it's it's been it's been great amazing now brad by by you you know finishing your first two books and getting them into you know the publishing stage there's a lot of new readers who are they're writing their first book they don't know what what's next can can you give them it's a two-part question can, can you okay. give them tell us one positive thing that you'll be like you know after writing these two books and through the process this is something i'll carry over to my third book my fourth book and what's one thing that you're like oh that definitely did not work i'm not going to do that again um so one thing, and this is just my own process of, of stuff and how I've, as I'm writing and how I, how I do stuff, um, the, what I usually do, and I know you, people have different writing styles and whether you're a, a pantser or a plotter and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. um, one thing I've, I, I do is I have, and I have some right next to me. So I write pretty much like a, it's a, it's a synopsis, so to say, but it's like a, it's like a short story version of the novel that I'm writing. Um, yeah. And so I, it's something I started doing with, with night crew. Um, I did it in fear not the dead. Um, I'm, I'm technically writing my fourth right now. Um, uh, my fourth book. And yeah, I, I've done it with each one of them now is, you know, I'll, 
I write as a short story. I mean, it's about 10, 15 pages. And then from that turns into the three, you know, 300, 350 page book or I think, uh, fear not the dead actually came up to right under 400 or right at 400 pages. Um, but, you know, I first start writing it as a, just a little short story, but you know, I'll have things in the short story. It'll, it'll say something like, um, then they fight period. Um, well, that little couple words there turns into, you know, 700 word scene of, you know, of, of a fight scene or something that happens, but it's enough that it, it gives me a map and a, you know, a blueprint as I'm, as I'm writing. And so I, and from a plot standpoint, you're able to kind of pre-work out some stuff that um, if you're just kind of panting it, um, that you may not think of. I, I think there was a quote by Neil Gaiman that said, um, you know, you write your first draft and then you go back and write your second draft acting as if you knew what was going to happen all along. Um, and, um, and so doing the little short story helps me to um, figure out so that I knew what I was doing all along. <laughs> so, um, you know, this is my, you know, it's, it's my, how do I, again, how do I kind of plot it out before, before sitting down and, and cranking out 60,000 words and realizing that didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way of doing it. That's an interesting way of doing it. Yeah. It's, I mean, similar to like outlining, but I'm, I hate outlining. I'm not an outliner. I, even when I was in college taking classes and it was like, do an outline. I'm like, I don't want to, um, <laughs> <and so, laughs> I, I am not an outliner at all. Um, but doing a little doing a little story of it that 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 I can do. And then what was this, the the second part of your question was? And what's one thing that you you're like, boy, I would not do that again. <laughs> um, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. Something I'm thinking of that I've kind of done so far that I'm like I wouldn't necessarily do it again. Um, I don't know. I kind of, like I said, I've kind of been developing my process as I'm going. I'm, I'm, you know, being, being new at it. So, um, you know, every, everything's just kind of been slowly evolving throughout, throughout each, each story. Um, um, I don't know that, that, that's a, that's a hard one. Um, I mean, where I'm at right now and after having worked with, um, we're we're with Unveiling Nightmares and you know a couple other indie publishers. The not doing again, maybe waiting three or four months to get a rejection letter from an agent. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> yeah, I mean you you send a you send a you send a query letter out to an agent and then you sit there and wait three months, six months, sometimes never to get a form you know rejection letter that says we're sorry, it does not you know. Um, you know, although your story is a great premise, it does not match what we're looking, you know, and all that kind of, you know, kind of boilerplate rejection. Same thing to give everyone. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, so yeah, as you know, after working with, you know, some really good independent publishers, um, yeah, yeah, what I may not worry about doing anymore is trying to go the, the traditional route, just kind of stick with um, enjoying the, the indie world and the, you know, it's a, it's a great community. In the, really in the indie publishing, um, between things like you know books of horror and everything they're doing, and uh, you know just it it it's a it's a big family and everybody kind of works together to promote each other, which is absolutely amazing. I mean, it's, it's absolutely amazing, I and mean, that's why I yes. love indie horror so much because it's like a team effort. It really is. It's a team effort. It it is, and I mean. You know, uh, you know, you when you go, you go to the bookstore, and um, you know, you look look at the horror aisle, which usually is just a couple shelves. Um, you know, it's not it's not usually a very big section, and when you know when you go to Barnes and Noble or anything, but um, yeah, I mean, there's only a handful of names that you see. Um, you know, usually, and of course, and, you know, there's King, and then there's a couple others that are kind of sitting next to him, and you know, that's about it. And so, the the indie world especially from a from a horror standpoint um i mean to me it's it's definitely been it, it's it's been a great community like i said and it's, it's definitely been the way to go um i made some 
really great friends so far with you know some of the other other authors who are out there you know they're they're writing some great stuff and um and they're just great people to to chat with and i haven't found anybody who like i'll ask a question um and they go well you know you have to talk to somebody else about that or and, you know just kind of you know shun me off oh, you i was yeah. having a, yeah i was having a you know conversation of you know the other day just about you know things like audiobooks because i don't know anything about audiobooks and um and you know i had it was five or six uh you know authors that i that i chat with and you know we were all kind of having a big group chat about audiobooks and they they have done some i've i'm brand new to it and so um yeah it was just a big open question they were just giving me advice about you know what to do from an audiobook standpoint uh, it wasn't like, well, you know, we've had three or four books published and you're brand new. So, you know, don't talk to us. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it, it's been a great family to be a part of. I agree. I fucking love it, man. I fucking love it. All right, Brad, where can everyone find you? So I am on, um, so I'm on Facebook. Um, so, um, Brad Rick's author, I think is the, uh, is the name on Facebook. Um, and then I'm on Twitter. It's at Bradley Ricks. Well, I guess it's not Twitter. It's X, the application formerly known as Twitter, um, <laughs> <laughs> which it went from the shortest name to actually being the longest because you always have to tag with that formerly known as Twitter at the end of it. Exactly. Um, <laughs> so um, I don't I don't do a lot on Twitter, but every so often I'll post up on Twitter. Uh, mainly Facebook is where I do a lot of stuff. Um, I'm also you can find me on my website. Um, it's, uh, I'm, I make it super complicated for people. It's bradricks.com. Um, and so, you know, at any point you can, you can also, uh, find some stuff there. Um, <laughs> so, a uh, funny little story on that. So, um, uh, I have, I have a, I have, I have four kiddos who, who live at the house with us. Um, you know, so I've three of them are mine. One is my, is my wife's, um, two of them had their device taken away uh, because they got in trouble. And so, you know, nowadays the best way to, you know, if a teenager gets in trouble, you, you take the phone away and, you know, they're, then, then they kind of shut down for a while. Um, so I, my website is through Wix and I had, there's a little chat feature that's on there. I noticed I had a, a little chat bubble pop up on my, my website. And I'm like, what's going on? So I click on it. It's one of my kiddos found my website and that there was a little chat feature and started like messaging me on my through my website. I was like, this is not what that's for. <laughs> I was like, I was like, oh Lord. They're like, hey dad, can you uh bring me some medicine? I have a headache. And I'm like, my my website is not for you to ask me. <laughs> this is not yeah dude, this is not um direct messenger yeah <laughs> right no no <laughs> so yeah but no so you can find me on uh yeah so bradbricks.com um is my website um and then i said facebook um it's bradbricks author um on on facebook so those are probably the two best ways awesome well listen everybody look out for fear not the dead coming out in july Brad, it's been an absolute pleasure. July 12th. On. July 12th. July 12th. I'm through Unveiling Nightmare. Brad, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on, my friend. You're more than welcome to come on anytime. All right, everyone. Well, thank you for coming to the Horror Room. I'm Travis Bruce, and that's Brad Riggs. We'll see you next time. Take care.